Now we welcome our next speaker to introduce how to interpret the candida isolate in the urine. Professor Li, a head of infection control unit, also ID physician of the Department of Medicine from Malaysia. Let's welcome Dr. Li. Okay, good morning Hanoi, good morning everyone here. So bear with me, I have to speak in English, I can speak in your language even though I'm intrigued with your language. It's very beautiful with a lot of, uh, I don't know, a prosophy or dots on the top of the alphabets that I can understand. Now, my topic here is only focused on urine. I think Prof uh, Cheng has mentioned this now. So yes, what would happen if let's say you found yeast in your urine? Okay, and you all know that Candida is actually Dromophora. We found it on our skin, in my GI tract, but we only consider to treat when the candida become invasive and becomes a infect, infections. Okay, so it's not that uncommon that you found urine when you do culture. In fact, during my consult, I always go people, you know, go my junior doctors, why you go and collect the urine when you think that patient is asymptomatic? It caused a lot of trouble because you had to interpret it. So this is the outline of my talk today. So uh, candidia in a patient with catheter and without urinary catheter and shortly a little bit on the candida urea in a critically ill patients. Now, so when you have a uh, urine cultures that grow yeast, first and foremost, you need to ask whether the urine culture is collected through the method of collections, whether this is a clean catch urine, through, collected through a sterilized uh, method like catheter, or the patient was on indealing catheter for a long time. That is crucial. Okay, even though the, the first urine culture is positive, the most important step is to ask for the second urine culture. Should the second urine culture grow the same candida, same species, then it might be significant if the person is symptomatic. Okay, if the second urine culture is negative, then you can quite safely say that that could be colonizations or contaminations, especially when the patient actually is asymptomatic. Okay. This is a brief algorithm. But the problem will arise when you're talking about very ill patients, for example, those patients in ICU, they are intubated or they are septic, severely septic, they are delirious, they can't tell you whether they have dysuria or superpubic pain. That will pose a little bit of challenge here. Now, to differentiate whether this is colonization versus infections. So unfortunately, we cannot apply the signs and symptoms that we use to diagnose bacterial UTI in candida, uh, candida urea. So in bacterial UTI, is very simple. Symptoms, biuria, and also we look at the colony count in, in the urine. So in the candida urea, it's different because 25% of the patients with candida urea, at the same time, they have concomitant bacteria found in the urine. So the pyuria is not significant or is not sensitive to pick up or differentiate it. This is infections or colonization. As first step is you must rule out concomitant bacterial infections. Okay. Likewise, the quantitative urine cultures is also controversial. It's quite useful. We have a lot of data to help us to diagnose bacterial UTI, but this is not the case for candidia. As Study shows that in the patients that with a very low candidia, low counts, low colony counts of candida in urine, but they actually had severe renal candidiasis. Okay? Even though when they have high colony counts in the urine, it could be because that the candida actually replicates in the urine samples when the specimen actually is not fresh. So the, the colony counts is not a useful method to help us to differentiate whether this is colonization versus infections. So in another group of patients, those patients have been in dealing urinary catheter. Okay, certainly, pyuria is not a good uh, indicator. As you know that when patient has got long-standing in dealing catheter, the catheter itself may cause some inflammations. So the white cell, it just uh, signifies that there's some inflammatory process going on. It doesn't mean that the patient has got ongoing infections. In fact, study shows that pyuria is only strongly associated with some gram-negative UTI, but not for yeast-related UTI. So again, we cannot use pyuria as of indicator to decide whether these infections versus colonizations. Likewise, colony counts is useless. Okay? So nothing works. So what to do? So 
Some facts here, candyurea in urine with indialine catheter. Risk to develop candyurea was uh, increased by 12 folds after urinary catheterization. Comparing a patient with catheter and without catheter, obviously those patients that with catheter, the risk of develop the uh, candida urine is higher. And uh, candida colonization will ensue if the urine drainage device left in situ for a long period. And a study in the ill patient in ICU if the mean stay around 11 to 70 days, with almost certainly that patients will have you'll find yeast in the urine. Okay? But colonization doesn't mean or does not equivalent to infections. So the good thing about all this is what you need to do is only just remove the catheter. If you remove the catheter, the candida will disappear in 35 to 40 percent of the cases. And if you can't remove, let's say the patient still needs the catheter, at least you change the new catheter. That will also eradicate in 20% of the cases. Okay? Re reduce at least the risk of colonizations. So in summary, in the absence of pyuria and low coronary counts in the urine, tends to rule out candida infections, but the reverse is not true. Okay? So in a patient with no urinary catheter, symptomatic with pyuria, and two times urinary culture shows the same species of candida, Yes, it might be a candida, candida infections of the urinary tract. On the other hand, if patients that uh, with urinary catheter is a bit tricky, in most instances, we have to rely on the symptoms, fever. Okay, fever, and yet you couldn't find the other source of infections. The lung is clear, there's no abdominal infection, there's no skin infections, and the, you have tried to remove the catheter, the fever still persists, and the urine culture persistently growing the same organism, then in that scenario, you might consider that is a true urinary infection due to the candida and it probably warrants a ultrasound of kidneys, etc. if a patient is very ill to see how extensive either candida infections. So, now the next question is in a very severely ill patients, okay, does all urinary colonization equivalent or is a good predictive value of invasive candid candidiasis. This is true in patients that are critically ill, like in ICU. Now, the occurrence of concomitant candidemia is low, okay, actually very low, and only seen in 1 to 10% of candiuric patients in ICU. Okay? So it's not as big. So candidemia denuri does not predispose to the development of uh, candidemia. Okay? When it occurs, it tends to happen because of the presence of the upper renal tract obstructions, for example, those patients that are uh, under urology for obstructive stones, renal calculi, obstructive uropathy. And renal candidiasis usually develops as a result of a hematogenous dissemination of a fungal infections rather than enterogenous. Okay? So does candida colonization predict the development of invasive candidiasis? Okay? Now, we have been talking the whole morning about candida score, candida score index, you know. So believe me, if we, will, if we were to rely on this score, more than half, 50% of the patients in IC will end up in the, uh, on the antifungal agents. And towards the end, you have to de do audits to find out why your usage of can antifungal agent is suddenly increased. Okay? Yes, we can use a candida, candida score, but you must combine with other risk factors of the patients. For example, those that at high risk of develop uh, candida, for example, the burn patients or those that has got severe necrotizing pancreatitis or anastomotic leak. In fact, there's a study, this is not long, too long ago, 2016, and pre, pre study, whereby they compared two arms of the patients. One arm, those that have been colonized with uh, candida, they put on mecafungin and pericoli. The other arm, they put on placebo. And they found that, that the 28 days uh, survival-free is the same among the two groups. Even though if, either you put them on mecafungin or placebo, they are the same in terms of the survival at 28 days. So select your patients carefully. Yes, you may use a candida score or candida score index, but choose your patients that really form the high risk group and not simply all your patients in ICU care or critical care. So true fact about candida colonizations. Yes, colonization usually precedes candidemia. Okay, before patients develop candidemia, usually they have colonization somewhere in the body. Candidemia is not common in those that are not colonized. And Canada colonizations develops in, only, in up to 80% of critical ill patients. I've shown you just now, if you stay 11 to 14, 17 days, eventually you will be colonized with candida in ICU. Okay? But 
Even though they are colonized, only 1% to 10% of those patients being colonized with Candida actually develop or progress into invasive disease. So, the conclusion is colonizations alone does not actually predict invasive candidiasis. Okay, you need to assess the patients as a whole. So, in fact, this uh, what is mentioned in the guideline here, isolated urinary candida colonization does not predict invasive candidiasis. Okay, it may be significant in a very ill patients with unexplained fever. I've mentioned this now. Colonization sites more than two, and with uh, together with the multiple risk factors. Okay, so, so in my practice here, we don't usually do a uh, candida score. We don't swap the patient two times or three times in a week because I, otherwise I think my microbiologist colleague will not be happy because you'll be sending too many specimens to them. So we pick our patients carefully. I do not have uh, beta d glucan like you. Okay, we choose our patients collectively. Those that have been colonized more than two sites, yet they have uh, unexplained fever despite antibiotic, then we couldn't identify the source infection. We have changed the CBD, and they are from the high, high risk group, for example, hematological patients or those that, you know, just after abdominal surgery, we might empirically put them on the antifungal agent after we send the blood cultures. Okay, if we can assess to the beta bleed, we can, that will be the extra point. And stop the antifungal agent if we think that the culture is negative or the beta bleed is negative. Now, this is a more difficult question. What if you found the yeast in a patient that belongs to the hematological patients? Now, the study that I showed you just now mostly are conducted among the patients in ICU, excluding the hematological and also oncology patients. Or they have only a very small number of them, that therefore this group of patients not well represented in the previous study. So what to do? Okay, I know that most of the hematology will tend to start them on antifungal agent until proven otherwise. Now, based on the concept that all ill patients, you must take the candidiuria carefully and also importantly. Okay, so in fact, there is a paper, a small paper, okay, that published in 2013, interesting paper. It says that, you know, candidiuria in hematological malignancy patients without a urinary catheter, nothing more than a frailty marker. So in only 24% of, uh, only 24 patients, but in their study, they only found one patient, meaning 4% of patients that eventually progress into candidemia when they colonize with candidemia. And there are four patients uh, deceased or passed away in that study, but only one during obduracy found that actually they have, sorry, only one patient do not have evidence of in, uh, invasive candidiasis. So what I will propose here is, when you isolate the candida from urine belong to the patients, hematological patients, perhaps after post-chemotherapy, that is an indicator that you, know, you need to look hard for any disseminations. Okay? So what I mentioned here, meaning that your urine culture is collected from, not from CBD, it's a sterile method, it's a proper way of collecting the urine cultures. So it's just an indicator that you have to start looking for any disseminations Namely, you perhaps have to examine the eye, look for the skin from head to toe to look for any uh, lesions that suggest you have fungal infections. Look at the lungs, okay, examine the lungs, and etc. You may want to send the blood fungal cultures or the, the biomarker if you have access to it. Okay, if you think that patients, your patient is symptomatic, okay, and empirical treatment if it's symptomatic, and come back and review the patients again after the uh, investigation are all available. Okay, so in short, can diarrhea doesn't predict invasive uh, candida candidemia, even though in the immunocompromised patients. So I have to admit that I do not see young patients, I only see adult patients. Now, in neonatology, it's different. Okay, if a urine culture is isolated from neonates, it's highly significant because highly associated with candidemia as well as renal candidiasis. So for neonatologists, they probably have a lower threshold to start antifungal agent if were to isolate candida from the urine. But this concept is not true. You cannot apply this in adult cohort of patients. I think that's all from me.